big story of right now is the pipeline fire near Flagstaff. In less than 12 hours, that wildfire has exploded to nearly 5,000 acres and forced hundreds to evacuate their homes. And right now there is no end in sight. More than 250 firefighters and four air tankers are battling those flames that have already spread more than 15 miles. We have team coverage tonight. Our Ashley Paredes live in Flagstaff as people pack up their possessions. Meanwhile, meteorologist Jorge Torres tracking the dangerous winds. And we're also learning more about an arrest, how police caught the man they believe started this disaster. But we begin with a look at the map showing the evacuation areas in green. That's Schultz Pass Road, the Arizona Snow Bowl and Timberline. Those communities in yellow, meanwhile, are on standby. That's Doney Park and Mount Eldon Estates. U.S. Highway 89 also closed tonight between Flagstaff and Cameron with no reopening timeline right now. Our Ashley Paredes up there catching up with families rushing to get out safely. Officials are still out patrolling the evacuated areas off Highway 89 and many of the residents here tell me that this is the second time a wildfire has forced them to evacuate in just two months. This bright orange glow coming from the pipeline fire just north of Flagstaff. It wears on you. A disheartening view for those in the evacuated areas. A similar situation from when the tunnel fire sparked back in April. So many families back here and the whole idea behind being misplaced. And, I mean, last time I was like uh, hopping hotel to hotel, you know. Roderick Begay just getting home for the day, needing to be escorted over to his property, his mind filled with concern. Make sure my mom and pop are okay right now because I don't think they moved. I mean, because we're just right here. Drivers filling up with gas at the nearby Chevron before it closed up early as a precaution. It was also a spot where people came to get a close look at the plumes of smoke while waiting for the county to issue more orders. I'm ready to go if I have to go, but uh, I'm not in this situation yet, so I'm going to go back to my house and, you know, see what else I can find and pray. Pray, pray, pray. Marilyn at City already packing up some of her car. My traditional Navajo cultural items, uh, Navajo and Taos Pueblo. So those are the first things we get out. Some evacuees heading over to Sinagua Middle School, where an evacuation center was set up by the Red Cross. A safe place to stay, showers, towels, um, toiletries food, all the snacks and water they want. Resources they provide every time there's a wildfire, but this time hitting different. When we suspected it's human caused either by neglect or arson, it's it's hard. You know, Mother Nature, there's going to be fires, but that should not happen by a human fire, human arson fire. That should not happen. Fire crews and other personnel working hard to battle this wildfire and residents tell me their hope is that their home will still be here tomorrow. I'm Ashley Paredes, ABC 15, Arizona. And as you heard Ashley mentioned, shelters are being set up in for those in need. The main Flagstaff location is at Sinagua Middle School on Butler. Also, the Navajo Nation offering its gaming enterprise building and the Twin Arrows Casino Resort as emergency lodging and shelter for all those evacuees. And we told you earlier, officials believe this fire was human caused. And tonight, the man accused of sparking the flames sitting in a Coconino County Jail. 57 year old Matthew Reiser was arrested by Forest Service officers and he's charged with natural resource violations. We're working to learn more exactly about how he started that fire. Still a lot unknown there. Of course, high winds, a huge problem as we saw some wacky weather. This is one of the things we saw a uh, fire. What do you call this again, Jorge? You call it a fire whirl fire today. It was also called. Yeah. Now, and this, how does this happen? So here's how it goes down with these fires. If they're super intense with heat, you'll get that and also the erratic winds causing it to spin up on the leading edge of the fire line. So whenever you see something like this, you know that fire is intense and it has been because this fire has grown quickly over the past several hours. In fact, here's the latest update regarding the pipeline fire there just north of Flagstaff. Temperatures have cooled down a bit, but notice how the winds are still a bit breezy at times. Now from the west at 14 miles per hour. Check out the humidity only at 19%. So those ingredients are still there for the fires to continue to spread and gain momentum over the next couple of days. In fact, here's a look from outer space via the visible satellite imagery of the smoke from the pipeline fire. Notice how it's drifting quickly to the east and northeast, and we'll see this likely again tomorrow because the ingredients will be there 
for this fire to spread. We do have red flag warnings for the areas highlighted, essentially in central and northern Arizona on Monday. This does include parts of far eastern Maricopa County and as you head toward northern and eastern parts of the state too, because those ingredients, as I mentioned, will still be there. We're talking high winds, low humidity and very warm temperatures, not just for tomorrow, but also on Tuesday. And then we'll begin to see an improvement in our fire danger conditions beginning on Wednesday, which happens to be the first day of monsoon season. And we'll talk about the potential for storms in the forecast as well coming up in just a few minutes.